I'm going to show you how I built this large top bar hive using 2x lumber. The reason I'm using 2x lumber is to create a better barrier and more of a buffer from the drastic temperature swings I have lost colonies to. This is my first top bar hive and it is built using 1 inch lumber. It also has a viewing door on the side and some plexiglass on the inside. Building this hive is more of an experiment to see if having a hive built from thicker lumber will help insulate the hive better. I first used my skill saw to cut 2x12s and 2x4s into smaller pieces that are easier to work with. I then ripped off the rounded corners of the lumber so that they could be glued together. I simply glued them together and did not reinforce the joints in any way. I realize now that I should have used something like dowels. I clamped it together using all the clamps I could find in the shop. Once it was fully clamped, I let it set overnight. In the morning, I removed all the clamps to see how it turned out. I repeated this process for all the panels I needed to glue up. After they were fully dried, I used a scraper tool to remove as much of the dried glue as possible. I used a coarse grit on the belt sander to remove more glue and to smooth the joint out. Internet says the sidewalls should be 60 degrees from the bottom, so I set my table saw blade to 60 degrees to cut the sides of the bottom board. All right guys, there's the base. It's got 60 degree angles on it and it's 10 inches wide at the top, which is the bottom of the hive. So this is one of the sides. Um, it's a lot bigger than it should be. It's three foot six inches long. It's about, I don't know, plenty, plenty wide, but I need to cut it down to three foot five inches long and it needs 60, degrees on the top and bottom because it sits at an angle. So I got the fence set to one foot six inches. Uh, the, to the overall end result should be one foot three inches and nine sixteenths but I wanted to make sure I had plenty of room to, for error. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this at a 60 degree angle. So I have these pieces rough cut to how high they're going to be and I have them held in place with these two clamps so that I can measure from the base up because from the base to the top to the bars the internet says it should be one foot so these boards will be roughly one foot three and nine sixteenths inches long to make it one foot from here to the top. So I cut this piece of wood so that it would be measure one foot from here. And I'm gonna set this level on there. Make sure it's level so that I can mark each side where I need to cut. Here I'm gonna cut the side walls down to size, the proper length. These are going to be three foot five inches. I have it uh, temporarily assembled with these. Now I'm going to mark for the ends where to cut them. So here it is, here's the outline. Let's 
gonna be one end, and the other end is gonna go right there. For the end now I'm gonna go ahead and put it on this end is not messed up it fits on there pretty good so I'm just gonna glue it in place and then screw it that end's done. So this one didn't quite fit. So I added a shim to the bottom. So I'm gonna drill entry holes. I gotta put a shim over here. Here is the actual hive assembled. There is no roof yet. Uh, the back end is fine, but the front end it was a little bit difficult. I had to shim down here because it wasn't quite far enough down. Looks like there's still a gap. I'll probably fill it with something. So I cut two pieces for the gable ends, maybe. That's what it's called. Um, they're going to hang over slightly. And there's going to be a vent hole up here. So now I'm going to attach the this part to the actual roof part. So I marked this. There's going to be an edge that goes right here. I'll probably leave a slight overhang. To four and a half. So here it is so far. This is my what's turning out to be ginormous top bar hive. I don't know if I found the wrong dimensions, but it seems larger than it should be. But the base is 10 inches from the base to the top, where the top bars are, is one foot. So, which makes that like 20 some inches across. And the top is another five inches. Next we're going to drill some holes. Plans I found called for three quarter inch holes so that you can put a cork in it. But all I have is this half inch bit. So I'm going to use that. And it's dull. I think they might need to be a little bit bigger. So this is it so far. Um, I got some galvanized metal for the top. I don't know if that's what you're supposed to use. I don't know if it'll make it too hot, but that's all I could get and I need to get it done. Also, I drilled three quarter inch holes in there so I could use cork and I painted it. I'm gonna put another coat on. Not filming as much because it needs to get finished today. Right now, 
I'm cutting a bunch of one inch strips for the top bars. So these are one inch, uh, one inch high. I'm gonna take them down to one and a quarter. So now I have this piece of oak. And I'm gonna cut it into strips to put on here. And I'm gonna cut a groove down the center and I'm gonna glue it in. Got my top bars cut. Now I'm gonna glue in the splines. All right, now I'm gonna move this inside and put a little weight on it. Here are all the top bars. They've been sitting all night. Looks like some of the glue's a little wet still. They were sitting all night with uh, my planer sitting on top of them. Okay, so I folded up some hardware cloth a couple times to make small gaps. I'm gonna staple it over this, keep anything from going in there. I have these legs cut at an angle. They're gonna go from this corner to the center. These legs are pressure treated, so I did not paint them. There's the legs. Where it's kind of dark in here. There you go. It's fully legged. Should stand about three foot tall. And there it is, flipped over on its legs. So what I just did was cut this piece of wood. I had real wood and then I miscut it. So then I had to use plywood because that's all I had. I'll probably put some real pine in there uh, at a later date. But I got the angle real close and then I sanded till it fit snugly. There's still a little gap down there, but I think the bees will fill it. And I'm gonna put it like this and screw into it. This is my follow up board and I'll uh, put a little spacer in front of it as well. Now I'm gonna cut this top off. Well, there you have it, there's the follower board. So I have all the frames made, these ones are still drying. These are the ones I made yesterday, and I'm gonna rub beeswax on the spline. Kinda lets them know where they need to start building onto. Here's my block of beeswax. I'm gonna take it. And rub it on. Fair warning, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs>